That's what was spelled out uh, in this talk. She said, we will uh, not compromise on these concerns, even when they force trade-offs with our economic interests. Even if we have to stop all trade with China, of course, that's going to hurt American workers who are buying uh, many consumer goods from China. If we can somehow stop all trade and investment with China and create a crisis there and lead to a fall of the government, it'll all be worth it. Well, there have been a lot of developments in the last week uh, in America's strategy against China. The United States has uh, accelerated its uh, economic warfare against China and uh, announced that we're now in an all-out trade war with the intention of preventing China from making uh, technological progress and to uh, boycott any support of its uh, chip industry. The president of Korea is today on the April 25th meeting in Washington with the president who's telling him not to continue to export uh, chip making machinery or even ships uh, to China and is uh, trying to promise him that he can get the U.S. market instead of the uh, Chinese market and using the military threats promising Korea the atom bomb and other arms to fight against China, if he can convince Korea to fight to the last Korean like the Ukrainians are doing, this would be a great victory for the Biden administration. But all of this has been spelled out uh, less than a week ago. On April 20th, Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, gave a talk to the U.S. Economic Relationship uh, Group at Johns Hopkins uh, School of Advanced Studies. Johns Hopkins is the university that publishes all of the World Bank reports and is a uh, training ground for American diplomats. And uh, basically, she made an official declaration of economic war. Uh, explaining how the United States intends to fight to stifle China's remarkable economic growth, if it can be done. She's not an, she is an economist. She's not a military or a national security strategist, but precisely for that reason, her talk outlined how the United States is fighting China, not militarily on the battlefield, but economically, uh, in order to hurt its economy and uh, hopefully stop its economic growth. If you read her talk, you see uh, something strange about a distinguishing characteristic of our times, that uh, it's women who are the most belligerent and warlike voices today. Janice Yelston is in the tradition of Madeleine Albright and Hillary Clinton and Victoria Newland in the United States, and uh, her counterparts are Ursula von der Leyen, uh, in the European Union, and Annalisa Baerbock in Germany, uh, pressing for a uh, war against uh, Russia uh, and against China in the Ukraine, and extending this into really a global fracture between the NATO uh, group and what President uh, Putin calls uh, the world majority of uh, population. These are all voices of hatred against Russia uh, and China. Uh, and Russia's hated because uh, the United States thinks if it can pry Russia and uh, the rest of Central Asia away from China, they can isolate it uh, and ultimately uh, break it up, as uh, Ms. Yellen uh, explains. Basically, she and the rest of the Biden administration have framed this, their hatred by claiming that the United States is surrounded by enemies headed by China and Russia. Now, they make this claim despite the fact that it's the United States that has attacked the Near East and NATO that's uh, attacked uh, other countries and uh, had color revolutions in the post-Soviet states and uh, have overthrown governments. So despite the fact that the United States is the aggressor throughout the world, if you read American media and you listen to the American diplomats, it's America under attack. And uh, China is the leading country that is attacking the United States. So uh, we're seeing an old trick. Uh, as the Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels uh, explained during World War II, the way to mobilize a population to support a war is to say that their country's under attack. And that's exactly what the United States is saying today. That's how the Roman papacy uh, in the 12th and 13th century basically set 
Western Europe against uh, uh, the Near East by saying that uh, Christianity was under attack by uh, the Muslim uh, threat and armies were sent uh, that actually uh, were directed mainly against other Christian countries to try to establish uh, Roman control by the papacy uh, over uh, Germany, France, Spain and uh, the other countries that it all uh, uh, went to war with. And most of all, uh, Byzantium, uh, the Byzantine Empire, which was the main Christian center at that time. Well, the parallel to that is uh, America's uh, uh, nominally fighting Russia in Ukraine, but actually fighting Germany and Europe and uh, using the fight against Russia to lock in its control over its uh, European allies. So at any rate, Nazi Germany militarized during World War II, claiming that it was the victim of uh, other countries' attack. And uh, that's exactly what George Bush tried to do when, he, when America attacked Iraq. Uh, he lied that Iraq had biological and nuclear weapons of mass destruction. And if it didn't have them, it was going to try to get them. <laughs> it was the United States itself that had these weapons, not uh, Iraq. In America, we're getting an inside-out picture that every single week depicts China as attacking uh, the United States. Secretary Yellen stated that America needs to protect itself, and her evidence is to blame China for the fact that America is deindustrializing. China has been growing very rapidly and uh, raising its uh, national income uh, and its living standards. Most of the American population has been losing its living standards uh, for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, real wages have been going down and down. The overhead of debt and rents have been going up and up. The American voters are in a state of malaise. They know that they're suffering. And uh, the reason they're suffering is I've discussed in these lectures before is because uh, what used to be industrial capitalism has turned into finance capitalism. Naturally, the uh, finance capitalists that are steering the system are not going to blame themselves. They need an external enemy. And uh, China, because of its success, is the most obvious uh, country to label an enemy. Any country that is a success and independent from the United States and is growing and keeping its wealth at home is declared an enemy of the United States ipso facto. That means automatically. What actually has ended American industrialization, as I said, is finance capitalism and uh, financialization, privatization, rent seeking, absentee, uh, Home ownership, home ownership in the United States has fallen by uh, about 10 percentage points uh, since 2008 as a result of uh, President Obama's uh, support of the banks instead of uh, bank customers. And so the financial sector is trying to deny responsibility for causing this shrinkage American living standards. And uh, uh, how do you deny responsibility? You say that somebody else is doing it. And uh, that is what America's uh, neoliberal economic uh, courses teach students in the universities. The university economics courses applaud finance capitalism as economic progress because it, it does make rich people richer, but it makes the bankers and real estate owners and monopolists richer at the expense of the rest of the population. But the universities essentially say, well, if the magnitude of wealth of stocks and bonds and real estate, if the prices are going up, that's how we measure progress, not in terms of how wages are going up or how living standards are going up or how government health care and other infrastructure are providing subsidized services. None of that uh, really counts as progress. And in fact, Countries that try to build up their infrastructure with government support are basically to blame for uh, all of America's problems. So when you listen to a speech by, it could be not only by uh, Treasury Secretary Yellen, but by Blinken and uh, Sullivan and the other national security and secretaries of state, it's exactly the same narrative uh, that you're that you're getting. Well, Miss Yellen blames China specifically for the fact that its government actively subsidizes your industrial uh, modernization and uh, you invest in public infrastructure. That's the opposite of the United States. Uh, the United States, England, and Europe are privatizing their 
public infrastructure and turning it into monopolies to uh, create monopoly rent instead of to provide infrastructure services, uh, health care, transportation, pensions at a subsidized rate. Basically, Yellen told her uh, audience that in recent years, she's, quote, seen China's decision to pivot away from market reforms toward a more state-driven approach. Her pretense and the big lie in American diplomacy is that a market reform means the state doesn't do anything. When the Americans say market reform, they mean no government regulation at all no anti-monopoly regulation, no government investment in infrastructure. It means uh, no government forward planning. All planning is to be shifted to Wall Street and the banks. And the purpose of that planning is to make money for the banks, the financial sector, and uh, their customers. That is what uh, Ms. Yellen said, very straightforward. Now, the fact is that every economy really is a mixed economy, especially the United States, which has just uh, announced a few months ago a huge subsidy program for ostensibly for environmentalism, but it really means that it's subsidizing its uh, industry in conflict with uh, European industry that does not uh, uh, get any uh, such subsidies. So it's the United States that's using its government to uh, plan the economy along military lines, aiming at control of other countries, but it's accusing other countries of doing just what it's doing. The American strategy is to prevent China and other countries from becoming prosperous by government investment and support of their industry, which is exactly the way the United States uh, has grown. And I'll quote what Ms. Yellen said. Let me get her quote up. She said, quote, China has long used government support to help its firms gain market share at the expense of foreign competitors. In other words, it succeeded in producing goods at a lower price than other countries can do. But in recent years, she says, its industrial policy has become more ambitious and complex. Well, you should be glad it's ambitious and complex. China has expanded support for its state-owned enterprises and domestic private firms to dominate foreign competitors. In other words, to become more efficient than they are. It has done so in traditional industrial sectors as well as emerging technologies. This strategy has been coupled with aggressive efforts to acquire new technological know-how and intellectual property, including through intellectual property theft and other illicit means. In other words, when China is trying to develop its own technology, instead of letting the United States take the lead and buying the technology from the United States, that is defined as Chinese aggression. And that is why the United States is fighting against China, because China is efficient. And uh, that is defined as an attack on America, which is not efficient and, quite frankly, has no way of being efficient until it moves away from financializing uh, its economy. Well, what does all this mean? To block China and other countries from joining what uh, Putin calls the uh, world majority, Ms. Yellen describes the United States economic approach to China as having three principal objectives. And uh, her list reveals the sinister and exploitive character of America's planned economic attack on China. The, in other words, she spelled out uh, in her own words exactly how America is going to attack China. It's like a general explaining, here is how we're going to invade your country uh, and destroy your economy. What she wrote is, first, we will secure our national security interests and those of our allies and partners, and we will protect human rights. By protecting human rights, she meant Xinjiang and other regions, China has to be cut up and divided into five countries. It's wrong of you to have a single country of China. You have to have each ethnic uh, group separate. Uh, Xinjiang and the uh, Uyghurs go their way. North and South China have to be broken up. Human rights is breaking up China so that it doesn't have a single government anymore and uh, so that there will be a free-for-all of privatization and monopolization. You will go back to the warlord type of economies of China's distant past thousands of years ago. The whole few thousand years, she says, 
has all been a mistake. She continues, we will not hesitate to defend our vital interests, even as our targeted actions may have an economic impact. They're motivated solely by our concerns over our security and values. Our security means our ability to bomb other countries and defeat them militarily. And our values is we should uh, be able to get rich and other countries should not have any role to play except being our customers. She says, our goal is not to use these to gain competitive advantage, economic advantage, but of course that's exactly uh, her goal. The historical reality is that no technology has ever been able to be monopolized by any country. No country has been able to keep technology to itself. It's fluid and it's sort of just hopeless to, to believe that you can prevent other countries from knowing how to make things that you know how to make, like computer chips or automobiles or the things that uh, China's making. Well, the United States plan is to turn technology into a rent-seeking monopoly. In other words, if the United States can control information technology and shipmaking, then it can charge much more than it actually costs uh, to produce uh, goods with this technology. It can make monopoly rents. The United States realizes that it cannot survive by being an industrial country anymore because it's deindustrialized. It can only survive by being a, an international uh, monopolist in uh, monopolizing technology, especially military technology, uh, to prevent other countries from having the technology to defend themselves. American lawyers and economists call this intellectual property. Technology is our property and you can't have it. Uh, if it's property and you use a technology that we say this technology is controlled by the United States, you will have to pay us an enormous rent to use it and not develop it yourself at uh, low cost. Well, it's clear that when uh, Ms. Yellen talks about national security, she's talking about the ability of the United States to control other countries by paralyzing them with trade sanctions and investment sanctions if they don't follow American dictates. Here's what she said to her audience at uh, Johns Hopkins. Uh, the Treasury Department has sanctions authorities to address threats related to cybersecurity and China's military and civil fusion. We then carefully review foreign investments in the United States for national security risks and take necessary actions to address any such risks. And we are considering a program to restrict certain U.S. outbound investments to specific sensitive technologies with significant national security implications. By national security, she means if uh, we send computer chips so that China can use sophisticated computers or develop their own chips instead of being a reliant on America's allies like Holland or South Korea, then we want to prevent its achieving technological independence. So she concluded her talk uh, with an absurd attempt to deny that the United States is seeking international economic dominance. She says she's only, we're only seeking to serve other countries, to help them in a peaceful way. And if we have to bomb them, it's because we love them and we're trying to help them avoid socialism. We're, as the American general put it in uh, the Vietnam War, we had to bomb the village to save it. This is the American attitude. What she wrote is, these national security actions are not designed for us to gain the competitive advantage to stifle China's economic and technological modernization. Even though these policies may have economic impacts, they are driven by straightforward national security considerations. In other words, China's threatening us. You're threatening us by being independent. You're threatening us by being able to go your own way. And if we can't control you, we feel threatened because we have to control other countries to maintain our international leadership in a unipolar world. That's what was spilled out uh, in this talk. She said, we will uh, not compromise on these concerns, even when they force trade-offs with our economic interests. In other words, even though American investors are making a lot of money and high profits by setting up factories in China, she says national security comes first. And even if we have to stop all trade with China, 
Of course, that's going to hurt American workers who are buying uh, many consumer goods from China. But if we can somehow stop all trade and investment with China and create a crisis there and lead to a fall of the government, it'll all be worth it. Now we're back to uh, today. Uh, Korea's uh, president is in Washington uh, meeting with President Biden to get his instructions as to how to sacrifice Korea's computer chip industry to support the American war with China. And as the Financial Times uh, has reported, the aim is to block China from uh, obtaining or producing advanced semiconductors. The report says the White House has asked South Korea to urge its chip makers not to fill any market gap in China if Beijing bans Idaho-based Micron from selling chips, as it tries to do to rally allies to counter Chinese economic influence. In other words, China has uh, stopped buying chips from Micron, a company in Idaho, in retaliation for America's blocking uh, China from selling very goods here. The United States made the request, uh, just as uh, President uh, Yoon suk yeol prepares to travel uh, to the United States and uh, let him know this is what we're going to talk about. You'd think that uh, the president of Korea would have told his plane to turn around and fly back to Korea if that's the demand, but he's coming to the United States uh, anyway to see, well, what do the United States uh, have to offer to counter Chinese influence? China, just this month, lost its own national security review into Micron. Micron is one of the dominant players in the global, uh, it's called a uh, memory chip uh, market, alongside of South Korea's Samsung Economics and uh, SK Hints. So uh, it's not clear whether the Cyberspace Administration of China is going to take punitive action, but the stakes for Micron are very high because uh, Micron has been selling most of its chips to China. And if American companies can't sell to China, if China makes its own uh, chips, then um, uh, the profits of American computer companies will go down and they won't have enough money to invest in uh, new technology. And China is going to pull even further ahead in uh, getting more patents and more technological breakthroughs than are occurring in the United States. Other U.S. Uh, observers have spelled out uh, the strategy in greater detail. For instance, one of the online discussion groups, Political, said just uh, a week ago on April 18th that uh, in addition to the expected executive order on limiting uh, U.S. technology investment in China, the U.S. is also thinking of banning the Chinese TikTok. That's in the news here in America every week. We've got to ban TikTok. Why? Because it's the most popular pro, uh, application in the internet, and it's making a lot of money. Yellen and uh, the government says, if China makes a profit in America, it must sell the company to the Americans so the Americans can make the profit, not the Chinese. This is explicitly a racist and uh, aggressive military attack. China must not make profits in the United States, but it must let America buy up Chinese industry so we make profits in China. That is the basic asymmetry that underlines America's world diplomacy today, and that's why the world is splitting apart from the United States. The article continues, these moves would come on the heels of aggressive trade action last year, when the administration put in place new export rules that explicitly sought to undermine Beijing's uh, prized microchip sector and passed massive industrial policies aimed uh, at breaking reliance on the Chinese economy. Uh, at the time, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan was clear that the goal of the strategy was to preserve America's competitive edge, meaning dominance, in the emerging high-tech industries. And um, what Sullivan said was, quote, we must maintain as large a lead as possible in high tech sectors like microchips. So America's come right out and said, this is not a market economy. A market economy is when the United States tells other countries what they can produce and uh, what they can trade. A market economy is an economy controlled by Washington and by Wall Street. It has nothing to do with consumers and investors buying and selling and price competition. It's, they've uh, redefined uh, what a market is, and it's uh, very highly militarized.
So spelling out the uh, U.S. plan in detail, uh, the political article, the political article points out that U.S. policymakers, quote, last year considered including up to five major Chinese industries, microchips, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, biotechnology, and clean energy as uh, areas that China must be prevented from investing in and must rely on the United States, as just as Europe and uh, other countries must rely on the United States in these industries. Well, this has nothing to do with national security in the sense of being militarily threatened. The U.S. plan is to use a national security rhetoric, an umbrella, as an excuse for economic uh, warfare. Even the Financial Times of London has an article by Martin Sandbu uh, just yesterday on April 24th that points out the European Commission president, Ursula von der Leyen, gave a speech uh, just before her trip to China recently, and she described China as a systemic rival simply because it's uh, an efficient economic competitor. She said, if you're efficient, that is an economic attack on us. Because your efficiency and your rising labor productivity prevents us from dominating you. The uh, Financial Times article says, quote, she went much further in threatening to block China's economic opportunities with Europe if Beijing stays on its current, uh, current course. Well, something's changing, Mr. Sanbu said. He said, access to China for uh, European Union corporations increasingly means expanding production facilities in China. In other words, we're now dealing with European-Chinese relations, and the United States is trying to block Europe from dealing with China, just as it's trying to prevent Europe from dealing with Russia and uh, buying Russian gas and Russian uh, grain and Russian oil. So the United States is trying to prevent European firms from moving to China. And the reason they're doing it is because now that uh, European companies can't buy Russian gas anymore at the low price, the gas price is way up, so it will move to China. So uh, if it buys Russian gas, it can uh, buy Russian gas in China, but it'll be much uh, less expensive in China. So the problem is that uh, the European companies are moving their own production to China. And of course, if they move their production to China, Who's going to be working on the assembly lines? Germany is not going to send its uh, German labor to China to work on the assembly lines in, that it's making in Germany. Chinese workers will uh, be, work on the assembly lines. The factories will be Chinese. They'll be managed by, uh, by Chinese as the uh, European companies transfer their technology to China. And that's what the United States is uh, trying to block. And so the Financial Times article that, well, the way to block uh, Europe's uh, trade and investment with China is to get labor's support in it. The government is telling labor, well, if, uh, if uh, European companies invest in China, then you're not going to have a job in Europe anymore. And you're not going to go to China because you don't speak Chinese and uh, China wants to employ its own labor there. In the US view, Socialism is the enemy of labor. Raising living standards is socialistic, and that's uh, being denounced. Uh, you make profits by lowering wages, not by uh, raising them. And uh, so you're really having the world divide into two different economic systems. Well, the problem, of course, is that neither America nor Europe can reverse what's been happening over the last uh, 40 years since uh, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan and the neoliberal turn that Europe has, has taken. You can't reverse the privatization that's taken place. You can't reverse the debt overhead that's mounted up and taken place. The monopoly uh, treating of health care, the dismantling of uh, public health services from England uh, to the United States, and uh, the dysfunctional financial system that uh, you've seen the Swiss banks uh, that are going bankrupt uh, and dissolved in the last week. Right now, uh, today as we're speaking, Korea is being uh, promised a wider U.S. market if it will stop exporting computer chips to China. It's being forced to, uh, to choose. The United States tactic is you're either with us or against us. And the United States will impose sanctions if uh, Korean companies continue 
to produce in China. Samsung has factories in China. And the United States said, if you don't close down these factories to prevent China from getting your computer chips, we're going to impose sanctions on you. And you're going to lose the U.S. market. And then where will you be, Korea? Not only that, but we won't uh, defend you anymore from South Korea. And in fact, uh, we're supporting uh, Japan, which is uh, your long-term enemy. So uh, the uh, United States is trying to uh, spend this week bullying South Korea, whose president is not anywhere near as uh, friendly to China as the last president is. And we'll see uh, what the Korean president imagines that he can get away with that will not... uh, create a uh, revolt uh, among uh, Korean voters. So right now you're seeing the whole world as an uh, arena, an economic arena for the economic war that is uh, just as vicious and deadly as the military war that uh, Russia is uh, fighting against NATO uh, in Ukraine. That's how I think over the next few weeks, you're going to see the strategy that uh, Secretary Yellen has uh, laid out and that Foreign Secretary Blinken is going to be uh, uh, explaining. You're going to see all of this break out into the open much more, at least in uh, China, if not in the uh, American news media.